Got an exam question walkthrough here of a year 13 rates question. The question looks at the calculation of gas volume at RTP using a concentration time graph to calculate the initial rate and order of reaction and then the calculation of the rate constant K. Now because there's a graph involved in the question, I've put a link to the question in the description. So if you've got access to a printer, you might want to print it out and do it on the paper itself. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And if you want to leave a comment in the comment section, maybe suggest um, a future topic that I can cover, that would be great. So here's the question. It's on two slides. So I'll click through. If you pause the video, try the question, and then play on when you're ready for the answers. So part A. Got to calculate the volume of oxygen measured at RTP the student should collect. So the way we're going to do that is work out the moles of hydrogen peroxide. So that's concentration times volume. Remember the volume's got to be in dm cubed. Use the mole ratio in the equation to get the volume of oxygen. So it's half of the moles of hydrogen peroxide. And then to turn that into a volume at RTP, we'll multiply by 24. So that's how many decimeters cubed of oxygen should be produced. So what sort of apparatus could the student use to collect that? They could use a 1000 cm cubed gas syringe. Having said that, I've never seen a gas syringe that big, but that's what you could see. Or you could use a 1000 cm cubed measuring cylinder. Remember that would be collected over water um, and the measuring cylinder would be upside down, filled with water and the oxygen as it's produced would displace the water. So either of those answers would be fine. So we'll suggest a different experimental method that would allow the rate to be followed over time. Well, because the reaction produces a gas, you could monitor the mass of the flask or the reaction vessel um, over time. So you'd monitor the mass lost by the reaction by recording the mass of the flask at regular intervals. That's kind of how I would phrase that one. So first part of C, determine the initial rate of the reaction. So we do that by drawing a tangent to the curve that hits the curve at zero um, seconds. We work out the gradient of that tangent, change in y divided by change in x. So there is a range for the answer, so I'll give you that when I show you what I got. So the initial rate, the change in hydrogen peroxide concentration, change in y, I'm getting at 2.3 moles per decimeter cubed. Change in time, I'm getting at 1400 seconds. So my rate came out at 1.64 times 10 to the minus three moles per decimeter cube per second. And the range allowed was those, so hopefully you've got somewhere between those two sets of numbers. The next part of the question I'm gonna do on another slide, so there's the same graph. You'll notice those two blue lines I've drawn there, they are the first two half-lives. So to get the order with respect to hydrogen peroxide, we're gonna look at how the half-lives compare. So the first half-life from 2.3 down to 1.15, has taken about 900 seconds and the second half-life has taken about 850 seconds. So we can say that the half-life is roughly constant, therefore it's first order with respect to hydrogen peroxide. So to get the rate constant, we can now write the rate equation because we know it's first order with respect to H2O2. So there's the rate equation. Rearranging for K gives us that. And now I'm just going to substitute in my initial rate that I calculated at the start of this part of the question. So that initial rate I got there and the concentration of the hydrogen peroxide at zero seconds. So there's the numbers there. So I'm getting an initial rate of 7.13 times 10 to the minus 4 seconds to the minus 1. Obviously your value for K is going to be determined by whatever you got for your gradient there, that initial rate. Just quickly explain the units. So we've calculated K from this equation here. So if we put the units in, you've got the units of rate on the top, the units of concentration on the bottom. We can cancel out those moles per decimeter cubed and we're just left with seconds to minus one. Now there is another way to do this. You could use the um, K equals lin two over half-life equation. I haven't used that because the half-life is, um, is slightly different. So I would use that equation, but only if the exam question actually told me what the half-life was.